If a patient is having a heart failure, this is a very important point for exams. If the patient is having a heart failure, along with that, if they are having a VTVF post MI within 48 hours, this is not an indication for ICD. But if they are having a VTVF after myocardial infarction beyond 48 hours, continuing beyond 48 hours or after 48 hours, this becomes an indication for ICD. And coming to the device therapies. Device therapies as such, first one is the I3 and the effectiveness of I3 in reducing mortality has come from two solid trials. One is MADID2 and second is sudden cardiac death HEP trial. And as I've told you for secondary prevention, definitely you can use uh, ICD because the patient has already experienced uh, some sort of ventricular attack arrhythmias and they have a near death experience. Then what's stopping you from giving an ICD? Patient may not be alive the next time if they get a ventilator attack arrhythmia. So secondary prevention is a class one recommendation. That's why I have shared in green. And when it is recommended, especially if the patient is having a life expectancy of at least more than a year, they have a decent life expectancy and absence of reversible cause. But remember, if, if a patient is having a heart failure, this is a very important point for exams. If the patient is having a heart failure, along with that, if they're having a VTVF post MI within 48 hours, this is not an indication for ICD. But if they're having a VTVF after myocardial infarction beyond 48 hours, continuing beyond 48 hours or after 48 hours, this becomes an indication for ICD. And of course, ICD is indicated for primary prevention also. But one point which I didn't tell you is the fact that implantation of ICD is absolutely contraindicated if there is a history of MI in the last 40 days for the purpose of primary prevention. I told you MI in the last 48 hours getting a VTVF, you do not implant an ICD. Similarly, for the purpose of primary prevention, the patient has not experienced a VTVF having a heart failure, but if they had a history of MI in the last 40 days, you cannot give an ICD. Okay, that's a very important point. Other things you know already. So if the patient is having NIHA class 2-3 uh, symptoms, and if EF is less than 35% despite three months of optimal medical management, and if the patient is having ischemic etiology of heart failure, then implantation of ICD becomes a class 1 recommendation. And if the patient is having non-ischemic, etiology, then implantation of ICD becomes a class 2A recommendation. And of course, for doing any of these procedures, especially ICD, you should have a life expectancy of at least more than one year or estimated life expectancy of at least more than one year. And this is something we have discussed already as well. You have to avoid in patients with NIHA class 4 because these patients, even if they don't die of ventricular attack arrhythmias because of ICD, they generally do die because of progressive heart failure itself. But one exception, as I've told you, in a patient who is a candidate for transplant or mechanical cardiac support. Okay, if the patient is a candidate for these procedures, then till they receive these procedures, you can try preventing death by giving a ICD in those patients as well. So, but that's a class 2B indication though. Okay, what about CRT? And we have another two solid trials which demonstrate the benefit of CRT in reducing mortality. One is CARE Heart Failure Companion trial and second is RAF trial. And we already know the indications for CRT. So patients should be in sinus rhythm, as we all know. Patients should have a EF of less than 35 percentage, which we already know. And they should be on optimal medical therapy, which means AC inhibition or ARNI and uh, MRI and beta blocker. So this is generally called as optimal medical management. I told you multiple times. So plus, if they have a wide QRS, especially QRS of more than or equal to 130 milliseconds, then they become candidates for CRT. What is the class of recommendation? That depends. The patient is having LBBB morphology and having a QRS of more than or equal to 150 milliseconds. That's a class one recommendation. On the other hand, if the patient is having LBBB morphology with a QRS of 130 to 149 milliseconds, then that becomes a class two year recommendation. On the other hand, if the patient is having non LBBB morphology and uh, QRS width is more than or equal to 150 milliseconds, then becomes a class two year recommendation as well. If the patient is having non-LBB morphology with the QRS of 130 to 140 milliseconds, that becomes a class 2B recommendation, the details of which we have discussed already. 
And one more important point which I've told you in the past itself is the fact that regardless of the QRS, okay, if the patient needs pacing for some high degree AV blocks, including those with atrial fibrillation, you can give CRT and this is a class 1 recommendation. I told you instead of going for conventional RV pacing in these patients, you can straight away go for CRT itself. And uh, even some guidelines recommend that you can actually upgrade to CRT. Suppose if the patient is already having some sort of high degree AV block and now coming with heart failure and they have already received some sort of conventional RV pacing and especially if the RV pacing percentage is more than 40 percent, this is called significant RV pacing, then in this situation you can upgrade to CRT, you can consider upgrading to CRT. You can remove that conventional pacing and you can upgrade to CRT, which means the patient already for some high degree AV block, they got a pacing, now coming with heart failure and a low AJ contraction. So you can consider upgrading them to CRT and this is a class 2A recommendation. And in the RAF study, 14% of those received CRT received some sort of complications. So usual complications are pneumothorax, understandable because it's in the chest, they can get pocket hematoma because you are implanting the CRT device under the chest. So you can get hematoma or infection in that pocket side or there could be lead migration or there could be rarely a coronary artery dissection also. So why coronary artery dissection? For that you need to understand how CRT works. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.